Hey, this is Aaron Hobson with Red Hook Guitar, and I've been getting a lot of questions about what is the circle or cycle of fourths and fifths. Um, if you notice in my profile picture for YouTube, I have the circle, um, circle of fourths and fifths, actually. It looks like this. It's a little diagram. Um, I also have it on my Facebook page profile. Um, we talked about intervals in another lesson, in the interval lesson. We talked about what a fourth was. So technically, um, if you're looking across your fretboard, if I start on F and I go the distance of a whole step and a whole step and a half step, that's a fourth, right? Because we had our minor second, our major second, our minor third, our major third, and then our fourth was the next. And I told you how they line up on the guitar. So if I have F here, if I just go down a string, to be flat, that's a fourth. And they line up on the guitar really nicely, right? And they have the sound, here comes the bride. Um, the guitar is tuned in fourths like we talked about, E to A, A to D, D to G, with the exception of the G and the B string, which is uh, major third, and then back to B to E on the bottom. So we've talked a lot about fourths already, um, what they are, what they sound like. Um, so the circle or cycle of fourths should be uh, easy to comprehend at this point. Um, so I've got this diagram here and you notice at 12 o'clock it always starts with this C and the reason being I've explained before is that the key of C has no sharps and no flats. And if you look up here this is called a key signature. If you know how to read music, then this should make sense to you. Uh, the lines are the staff, and this is your treble clef. And you notice there's no indication of any sharps, which were the hashtag symbol, or any flats, which were the lowercase b here. So the key of C has no sharps and no flats. So there's two ways that I can go around in the circle. I could go clockwise this way, or I could go counterclockwise this way. Uh, with the fourths, which I'm starting with now, I would go counterclockwise. So I start on my C, um, and I go back counterclockwise one note, that's an F. I go back to B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, which is the same note as B, F flat, which is the same note as E, and you keep going. So um, if you go counterclockwise in the circle, you're, you're, uh, you're seeing how all of your fourths are, okay? Um, so we talked about what that interval of a fourth was, and you notice, so I started with C. If I go back one, um, one note here to F, my key signature now has a little, a little lowercase b, the flat symbol, on the B note. So that means you have a B flat in the key of F. If I go to B flat, I'm adding another flat. So zero flats, one flat, two flats, three flats, four, five, six, seven. You just add a flat every time you go around the circle in a fourth. So, and you notice the key signature adds that each time there's two flats in here, there's three flats here, there's four flats, five flats, etc. Um, so another way uh, that I was taught to remember the fourths um, is this little device called bead gukuf. So if you can spell bead, B-E-A-D-G-C-F, um, that is a good way to memorize the order of fourths. So if I started on B and I go to E, that's a fourth. E to A, A to D, D to G, G to C, C to F. After F, you go to B flat and then you just go through B gilkuff with your flat notes, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. C flat is the same note as B, F flat is the same note as E. So this has really saved me a lot of time, um, you know, because you could sit there on your fretboard and you could go, well, this is F, what would this note be? Well, this is G, what would this note be? You could look at it on a fretboard diagram, but if you can just visualize this in your head, B gilkuff, and spell that out, it's kind of an easy way to, to come to terms with what a fourth is and memorize what a fourth is easily. Um, so that's fourth. So really, when we're talking about this circle diagram, it's just a device really to help you visualize 
uh, the order of fourths and the order of fifths. So now we'll talk about fifths. And when I talked about the interval of a fifth before, F to C, G to D. So if you know how to play power chords, those are fifths, root to fifth. So we talked about those. If you spell it out the long way, you have a whole step, a whole step, a half step, and another whole step. So this would be F to C all the way up here, right? Because we have minor second, major second, minor third, major third, fourth, augmented fourth, fifth. But that's kind of a long way to get to it. So I go from here to here. So there's my fifth. So F to C, B flat to F, uh, G to D, C to G. Those are all my fifths. And they line up on the guitar this way, like a power chord. Um, okay, so we talked about what a fifth was, and now when we look at this diagram, um, we're going to go clockwise on the diagram. So I've got C, no sharps, no flats, and then we go around in the fifths, we're going to add a sharp each time to each key. So C, no sharps, no flats. G is the next one, that's a fifth away. And you look at the key signature, there's one sharp, it's F sharp. You go to D. Uh, D has two sharps, A has three, E has four, B has five, um, F sharp, C sharp, and you just keep going around. So remember that this is also, A flat is also G sharp, E flat is D sharp, B flat is A sharp, etc. So, um, you know, you keep going and add a sharp to each key. Um, so hopefully that is useful for you. Uh, a lot of people have this printed out. A lot of people have this in books. A lot of people um, refer to this diagram just as an easy way to think of fourths and fifths, which are pretty important intervals for chords, as well as, uh, you know, when we get into things later like chord progressions, learning the one, four, five chord progression, uh, even in the blues, the one, four, five chord progressions, like a very, um, it's something that you want to think of very quickly, those intervals. What's the one, what's the four, what's the five? So memorizing this pattern and uh, learning this device is an easy way. Um, so I'm not going to talk about, there's little minors, <laughs> minor chords in, in the middle here, like not minor chords, but little M's to signify minor. Um, and we'll get into the relative minor of a key and what that means. Um, it's basically uh, related to the major sixth of a key. So, uh, for example, um, if you remember what a sixth was, um, you go from C to A, that's a sixth, right? C, D, E, F, G, A would be your sixth. So all it's telling you is in C major, A minor is your relative minor, but we'll talk about that more in, more in depth. But right now, I just want to talk about the outer circle going um, clockwise. You have your fifths going counterclockwise. You have your fourths. Uh, bead gukuf is an easy way to remember. Um, and when you're going uh, clockwise and you're talking about the circle of fifths, you're talking about adding a sharp each time to the key. When you're going counterclockwise and you're talking about fourths, you're adding a flat each time to the key. So uh, now you know what the circle of fourths and the circle of fifths is.